This is Mrs. Appiah with the answers for the practice test from Module 3B, Equations and Inequalities, Lessons 7 through 15. In the first problem, it says to add 6. Doing the op opposite operation is to subtract 6. That leaves us with a 0 pair. Bring down your variable, and 15 minus 6 is 9. In the second problem, it says to subtract 12, so we will add 12. This is the addition property of equality. This is a zero pair. Bring down your variable v, and negative 42 plus 12 is negative 30. In problem 3, it says to subtract, so we will add. We will add 5 to both sides of the equation. This is a zero pair. x plus 0 is x, and 3 plus 5 is 8. Number 4, this means to multiply, so we will divide. Divide by the coefficient, and x is equal to 13. Number 5, this means to multiply, so we will divide. Divide by negative 7. A number divided by itself is 1, and the answer is negative 4. 28 divided by negative 7 is negative 4. For number 6, it is g divided by 7. The opposite of division is multiplication so we'll multiply by 7. On the right, we write 7 as a whole number. On the left, I'm writing 7 as a fraction because I'm multiplying it by a fraction. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and g divided by 1 is g. On the right side, 14 times 7 is 98, so g is equal to 98. Number 7 is similar. It says to divide by negative 6. The opposite of division is multiplication. Multiply both sides by negative 6, and the answer is negative 108. Number 8, multiplying by 2 sevenths. So we think that when you multiply, multiply by the reciprocal, which is 7 over 2 and 7 over 2. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times x is x. 21 over 1 times 7 over 2 is 73 and a half. Number 9. This is a two-step equation. Undo all addition and subtraction first. Undo minus 12 by adding 12 to both sides of the equation. This is a zero pair, and 4m plus 0 is 4m. 16 plus 12 is 28, divide by 4, and the answer is 7. Undo addition and subtraction first. The opposite of adding is subtracting. 6r equals 24. 6r means to multiply. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. 6 divided by 6 is 1, and r is equal to 4. Number 11. Undo the subtraction with addition. Bring down the negative 4x. This is a zero pair, and that equals 16. This means to multiply, so we divide. Divide by negative 4, and the value of x is negative 4. Number 12. There are two ways to solve this problem. I'll solve it both ways. You could distribute the 3 to both terms. That gives you 3n plus 24 equals 60. Subtract 24 from both sides of the equation. Bring down the 3n. 60 minus 24 is 36. Divide by 3, and n is equal to 12. The other way that you could solve this problem is to divide both sides by 3 and undo this multiplication. To do that, when you divide by 3, or you could multiply it by 1 third. So these 3's cancel each other out because 3 divided by 3 is 1. Bring down the n plus 8. 60 divided by 3 is 20. Subtract 8 from both sides, and n equals 12. Number 13, graphing the inequality. 
So we're going to put seven in the middle and we put two integers on each side of the answer. The value of Z is less than seven. It is not colored in because seven is not part of the solution. It's all numbers less than seven. So we'll go ahead and put the numbers on 15, 14, 15, and 16. Greater than or equal to 7, so we'll fill that in because 7 is part of the solution and all numbers greater than or equal to 7. Number 15, less than or equal to. Since it could be equal to 7, we fill that in and we point it toward all the numbers less than 7. Greater than 7, but does not include 7, so it's an open circle and points to all of the numbers greater than 7. Number 17, solving the inequality. Do the opposite operation, bring down the R. Remember when you preserve or reverse an inequality, to reverse an inequality, that is when you multiply or divide by a negative number. So in this case, we are adding, so we don't even have to think about it. It is preserved. And the answer is 18. R is greater than or equal to 18. For number 8, the opposite operation is to subtract 9. W is less than. And negative 2 minus 9 is negative 11. So we write the variable and we write the number. This is going to be equal to because negative 2 is part of the solution and it points to all numbers less than or equal to negative 2. For number 20, we use the variable x and the number 12. It's pointing to all of the numbers greater than 12 but not including 12. For number 28, solve the inequality. Divide by the coefficient. We're dividing by a positive number so we the inequality symbol is preserved and the answer is negative four and a half. Here we're dividing by a negative number. When you divide by a negative number the symbol is reversed so it becomes less than and j is less than eight. Number 23 it says to divide by three so we multiply by three. On the left, I'm writing it as a fraction because I'm multiplying it by a fraction. And x divided by 1 is x, and the answer is 63. Here, we are going to multiply by a negative number. When you multiply by a negative number, you must reverse the inequality. So it goes from less than to greater than. And we are going to multiply by negative 3. I'm writing negative 3 as a whole number on the right side because I'm multiplying it by a whole number. I'm writing it as a fraction on the left side because I'm multiplying it by a fraction. The negative 3's cancel each other out because negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. y divided by 1 is y. And 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. For numbers 21 through 24, it also said to graph the solution on a number line. So I've written the numbers on the number line, and number 21 is less than or equal to, or just less than, so it is not filled in. Then number 22, all numbers less than 8, but not including 8, so it's left open. Number 23 is all numbers greater than 63, so it points to all numbers greater than 63, but not including 63. And number 24, all numbers greater than negative 21, but not including negative 21, so it is left open. The sum of three consecutive integers is 144. So we have our first number. Relating the next number to the first number is one more than and relating the third number is two more than the first number, and it will be equal to 144. Combine your like terms, that gives you 3x plus 3 equals 144. Subtract 3 from both sides of the equation and simplify. That has 3x equals 141. Then divide by 
the coefficient 3, a number divided by itself is 1. So the value of x, 141 divided by 3, is 47. Then it says write an equation for the situation and solve the problem. So we want the three consecutive integers. The first one is 47. The second one is one more than that, so 48. And the third one is two more than that, so 47 plus 2 is 49. And then you can add those three together to double check and make sure they equal 144. Number 26. The length of a rectangle is three units more than a width. Start by drawing the diagram. Figure out which is the complete unknown, the length or the width. It says the length is, so you know a little bit about the length. The width is the complete unknown, so we'll use a variable for width and then relate the length to the width. The length is three units more than the width, so we express that as w plus three. The perimeter is 30. So the perimeter is all of the sides added together. So we write an equation, the width plus the width, and then w plus 3 is one of the lengths, and w plus 3 is the other length. Altogether, that equals 30. Combine your like terms. That gives you 4w plus 6 equals 30. Solve your equation. 4w equals 24, divide by 4, and the value of the width is 6, and that is what we needed to do. And it just gave us units, so we just answer that the width is 6 units. Find the measurement of JKG. So JKG is the value of x. I know that these are angles on a point because all the way around will add up to 360 degrees. So I'm going to add each angle together and this angle which is unlabeled is a 90 degree angle. Make sure you include that. So I have x plus 24 plus 5x plus 90 is equal to 360 degrees. Combine your like terms and that gives you 6x Combine your constants, and that gives you 114, and that equals 360 altogether. Subtract 114 from both sides of the equation. 6x is equal to 246. Divide both sides by the coefficient, so the value of x is 41. Number 28. Reba is 11 years older than Fred. In 10 years, the sum of Reba and Fred's age is 62. How old is Fred now? This is a good problem to use a two-way table, and we also need to keep track of their present age and their future age. Once you have your table set up, figure out which person is the complete unknown. It says that Reba is, so we know a little bit about Reba, and we will compare her to the complete unknown of Fred. We'll use F for Fred. Reba is 11 years older, so we need to add 11 years to Reba's age. Then it says in 10 years. So we need to find out what, how old they will be in 10 years. So we will add 10 years to Fred's age, and we will add 10 years to Reba's age. Then it says the sum of their ages is 62. So we need to take their future ages and add them up, and that will equal 62. So we have F plus 11 plus 10 is Reba's age, plus F plus 10 for Fred's age. And together, all of that adds up to 62. Combine your like terms, so that gives us 2F. Combine your constants, that's 20, 30, 31, and that equals 62. Then, to solve your equation, subtract 31 from both sides, bring down the 2f, bring down or do the subtraction, and then divide by 2, divide by 2, and you'll notice that this is not going to be a whole number. 31 divided by 2 is going to give us Fred's age, and Fred is 15.5 years old. And we want to make sure we've answered the question. It says, how old is Fred now? And that is solving for Fred. 
Number 29. Jake bought four pair of shorts for $8.50 and five shirts for D dollars. Each t-shirt was the same price. He spent a total of $90.25. Write and solve an equation to find the cost of one t-shirt. So we know that the cost of the shorts plus the cost of the t-shirts has a sum of $90.25. He bought four pair of shorts for $8.50, so we can figure out how much those cost. Four times $8.50. And then the shirts, he bought five of them. And the cost of a shirt is unknown, and it suggested using D for dollars. So we'll simplify before we undo any um, addition or subtraction. So simplifying is your first step to solving equations. And 4 times 850 is $34 plus 5D equals 90.25. Then we can take away the money that he spent on shorts, and that will tell us how much he spent on shirts. So we subtract 34 from both sides of the equation. Bring down the 5D. That's going to be the cost of the five shirts. And 90.25 minus 34 is $56.25. Then we need to divide that evenly among the five shirts. Divide by the coefficient. And the value of D, which is the cost of a shirt, is $11.25. So it said write and solve an equation to find the cost of one t-shirt. So a t-shirt costs... 11.25. Ahab paid admission to the movie, which cost $12. He bought a soda for $4. Each box of candy costs $1.50. Ahab wants to spend no more than $25 at the movie. What is the greatest number of boxes of candy Ahab can buy? The important information is the admission for $12, a soda for $4, and each box of candy costs $1.50. So we know that he's spending money on the admission, and he spent money on soda, and he's buying candy, and he wants to spend no more than $25. So he can spend less than $25 or equal to $25. The admission is $12, the soda is $4, and the amount of candy is $1.50 per box. And $1.50 per box is written as 1.50. And let's use B for box. We'll add up how much he spent on admission and soda. And then add $1.50 times each number of boxes of candy. Take away the cost of the admission and the soda, and that's the amount of money he has left to spend on candy. So he has $9 left to spend on candy, and it's $1.50 per box. So we divide by the coefficient of $1.50. A number divided by itself is 1, and B divided by 150 is 6 boxes. So it says, what is the greatest number of boxes he can buy? He can buy uh, one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But the greatest number of boxes he can buy is 6 boxes. If he buys all 6, he will be out of money. That concludes the review before the test.